Hello and welcome to Smoke and Talk Boxing Podcast. I'm your host, George Zayas, along with my partner and good friend, Dave Steve. Tonight, we got a really exciting show. We got some great guests tonight coming on. Dave, that's a cool shirt you got on, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Not as cool as uh, I heard you finally got the, the socks shipped to you. Let me tell you something. I ordered my official. These are official. Hold on. Let me take these out of the pack because this is fresh out of the pack. These are the official Smoke and Talk socks. These are limited edition collector's iron. This is a one run and done sock. Look at this. This is a beauty, a smoke and talk sock. This is going to be a highly collectible item. You're going to want to get these. Oh, my God. These are like, I tell you what, Dave, these socks right now, because they're limited and they're going so fast like hotcakes, what's going to happen is that the price are going to go up. They're going to go skyrocket. They're going to skyrocket. You want to get your, your first limited edition uh, Smoke and Talk socks. You're going to want to get these and uh, enjoy wearing these every time you come out to one of the bouts. I know I am. All right. So anyway, uh, how cute. Dave, tell us how we can get those socks, Dave. Hey, listen, you call me at 1555-1212. Any area code. I answer, I answer to any area code. 555 <laughs> one two one two and i will give you the information pick your area code if you're in if you're in suffolk county just put 631 in front of it if you're in the city put 718 it doesn't matter five 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 one two one two i'll get you those socks all right <laughs> so we'll negotiate. all right actually the way you get those socks is you hit them uh you hit dave up on a pm on instagram and we'll make sure we get you a pair of socks and uh we'll ship them out to you all right, so let's get into the show, man. I'm really excited about the guests that we have tonight. First and foremost, we have two guests tonight. Today, we have a bonus guest. Uh, the first one is Alex uh, Devia. You ever wonder who puts up the rings for who the outs? Who does it? Tonight, we got, we're going to tell you who does it, by the way. So we're not only going to show you that. We're going to talk about if they have like... Uh, if they have like chairs and tables underneath the ring and why do they have that there in case it gets a little ugly? Do we have to take out the chairs and tables and slam people on it? Does that normally happen? You're going to find out tonight because we're going to ask those and more pressing questions tonight on Smoke and Talk podcast. So first and foremost, welcome to the show. Let's bring out without further ado, our first guest, Alex Devia. Let's give him a hand. Welcome to the show, Alex. It's Alex. It looks like it looks like Santa Claus and one of his reindeer. Right there. <laughs> Alex, how are you, man? Welcome to uh, Smoker Talk Boxing Podcast. How you doing? Can you hear us? Oh, I lost I lost his voice. Yeah, we can't hear you, buddy. Oh man, what do we got to do? Alex, we can't hear you. Do we have to get him on and off or? Yeah, yeah, I think you gotta turn on turn on your uh, headset, the Bluetooth. I think they're off. Oh yeah, let me let me let me call Alex on his phone. He's on Julian's phone now, right? right yeah. Well, in the meantime, well, that's actually it says yeah, Hammer. Yep, that's Hammer's phone. That's Julian Rodriguez. This is our second guest tonight. But in the meantime, let me give out some shout outs while we're here. First, Luis Lopez, uh, welcome to the uh, Smoker Talk podcast. We also have Leonard Salgado, Leonard. Thank you. And, and again, thank you for joining us here. New York City Cats and Kids Boxing. We love Alex. That's right. We love Alex, too. All right. So um, I'm chewing his phone. Lewis says, send mine, Dave. You know where I'm at. All right. So we're going to make sure we send you some socks. You can order them through Dave. Just hit him up on, I, uh, on the IG. Uh, and yes, Alex is definitely the man. New York City Cops and Kids says he loves Alex, and so do we, and we thank you for being here. Dwayne Johnson, big shout out to you as well. He says, uh, Dave, about time for a haircut. LOL, I know a guy. All right, yeah, you know. But is he COVID free, and is he going to get summons by giving me a haircut? Listen. Because that same guy has been looking for Alex on, on the thing. George, you know what? Hit him up in the in the three way. We got a, we got a, that many texts, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the uh, about the um, what what it takes to make a show and with the ring, and then we'll bring Alex in. Okay, no problem. So then uh, let me just say something. You said is it COVID free? I'm sure that his barber will give you COVID for free. He's not gonna charge extra for that. Oh, okay. It's, it's, hey, I'm not gonna tip him then. I'll tip him some COVID. You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'll tip him back with a little COVID. 
All right. So uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, Leonard Salgado says, thanks for the shout out. Hey, man, thanks to you for showing up tonight and hanging out with us a little bit here tonight. And uh, also, thank you, Dwayne Johnson, for the prayers. Thank you for my pop. My pop's not feeling well. You know, he's had a little little bit of a run in with some stuff. But uh, thank you so much. For, and I really do enjoy that. Uh, you know, that that's very kind of you. Uh, all right. And then uh, Luis Lopez says, Gancho Loco. That means crazy hook and uh crazy and, punch. crazy punch yeah crazy. loco loco gancho loco yeah and you got to take your chances that's why you got to take your chances with that haircut all right let's see if we can get uh if we can get uh alex back on all right, uh, talk, i'll talk about the, the ring all right alex so, can you hear us alex can they hear us can we can hear them we can't hear you we we can't hear you at all they got the ear pods you want to uh, you want to chat to them on the phone, or you want to call them, George? Yeah, you know what? All right, I'm gonna put you, and I'll call them. I'll put you. Right, in. I'll just talk for a little bit. Okay. All right. So, promotions. If you want to be a boxing promoter, right? If you want to say, all right, I want to do a boxing show. What do you got to do? You got to rent a ring, and it's only. Let me see. There's like two people, I think, in the New York City area that do it. There might be a third person somewhere else in New York, and there might be a couple people upstate. But there's only two two guys to go to. You could go to either Alex Devia or you go to Frank. I don't know what Frank's real name is, his last name is, but Frank Frank is a, a postman. Uh, we like using Alex. Alex spreads out the work. Frank Frank will, will come. I love the guy, but he's a hardworking guy. He'll do it by himself, and then he'll try to get you to use all your people to help him out. But Alex will actually hire two kids from the gym and give them work and, and stuff like that. So that's that's why I kind of like Alex. But I do like Frank. I know Frank a little bit longer. So if you want to put on a show, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to rent a ring. Let, let, me, let me go through the particulars of putting on a show because there's some promoters out there. All right. So first of all, you want to do a boxing show. You need one to rent a venue. Okay. So I'm going to do it in, say, a bar, or I'm going to do it in a church, or I'm going to do it in a, in a high school. I got to rent it. That's right. Are you on? Did we get them on? Or? Yeah, let me see if we get them on. All right. All right, we got them on. Check, All right. check. All right, yeah. Guys, now we can All right. That's what it was. That's what it was. All right, cool. So, Alex, what I, what I was Yo, doing what's is- what's up, I'm, fellas? Thank you. Oh, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Real talk. All right, so what I was telling these guys is a person wants to do a boxing show, right? Who yeah. are they going to call? They got to call either you or Frank, Frank the Postman. <laughs> is there anybody else in the New York City area that does rings besides you and Frank? I wouldn't care because I only care about me and Frank. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, so the answer is if you want to do a show and you want somebody to actually show up with a ring, it's Alex. I mean, Alex has helped me out uh, many times. He's charged me, but but that doesn't matter. <laughs> that doesn't matter because he pays, he gets kids, he gets boxes, he he gives them work by by doing that. How many rings do you own, Alex? I have eight rings. Eight rings? Yeah. I thought you only had three. No, I got eight rings because you only care about the small rings because you want. You want these guys to kill each other. I got the yeah. big rings for the for the for the um, ESPNs, the uh, you know the uh, PBCs, the uh, top ranks. The they want the big giant rings, the twenty fours. You want the eighteens, so yeah. that's the ones I tell you about. Yeah. If you had anything small, like you had a portable phone booth, and a lot of these kids because they're on cell phones, they don't know what phone booths are. I would get it if you had a four foot ring. You know, so there would be action all throughout the fight. I I, I would get that from you. So he, trust me, he, I know that. He he manages eight rings, George. Eight rings. How do you manage eight rings? He does. Well, with the eight rings, I got eight trailers. So um, depending on what, you know, depending on what size the person wants, that's the trailer I'm taking that day. And sometimes I got four shows in one day, or the most I did was five shows in one day, you wow. know, and yeah, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of scheduling, a lot of scheduling. And, um, 
you know, giving yourself time. Sometimes when I have a lot of shows in one day, they let me put the ring up a day before or two days before. And as long as the ring is up, I'm I, half the battle is done. All right. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you another thing. Where do you keep them? And how many people do you got to train? Because to put up the ring, that that's a skill. And to, to actually unload the ring out of your truck, which takes like a couple hours and then to, to build it and then to break it down and then put it back in the truck, it has to be done a certain way. Yeah. How, how, how many people have you trained and where do you keep these trailers? Well, the trailers, I, I rent a space in uh, the VFW and uh, I put them in parking spots in there. And as far as training people, I got about four guys that know how to put it up that I, tr they got to be trustworthy also. You know what I mean? I got to, I can't have a slacker that puts the ring up and then he goes to the bar. You know what I mean? I got to, I got to, I have responsible people that they're right next to the ring at all times, just in case of a catastrophe. Now, Alex, let me ask you a question. You've been obviously in the contracts that you write up. You always write up uh, that you have to have a sing, uh, seating, a seat ringside every time you do this. Yeah. What is the biggest bout that you've seen in your lifetime since you've been putting up rings? Um, I mean, the biggest bout. I mean, the I've been in some pretty big ones. You know, I I did the ring for Joshua when he got knocked out with um uh, the this what's uh, what's the Mexican. Ruiz, oh, yeah, I did that ring, you know, and Klitschko. How I, how is I did that? Klitschko. With, oh, wait, um, uh, yeah. like, that's in What's MSG. That? You did the ring in MSG. Yeah, I did the ring in MSG because they bought a special ring for that fight. They bought a twenty-six foot ring oh. to make it bigger for Joshua, which it didn't help. But right, you know, I I I you know when. MSG has their own ring, but it wasn't big enough. They wanted a big ring. So really? yeah, so they, they hired me. I had to bring it, I had to bring it from Florida. They bought, they bought the ring, they shipped it to Florida, they used it during their training camp. Then we had to bring it from Florida to uh, MSG and put it together. Wow. And Alex, let me ask you a question. Uh, Patrick Blaze, uh, Blazy391 wants to know, is that your only job? Um, no, well, I, uh, I do the rings. I, uh, I train pro fighters. I train my son. I train uh, Christian Bermudez. I train a couple of pro fighters. And then I own a, an amateur gym in Newark that I train kids. Okay, so it's all boxing related. You got the ring, you got the boxers, you got the gym, you got the whole nine. So you're just pretty, pretty much. If anybody needs anything, they, you're like a one stop shop. That's yeah, and you know about. what? When a guy, when a guy is that busy, you know what he doesn't have time to do? Shave. Shave. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, Dave. <laughs> you're right, brother. Get him. Yep. All right. So, so now let me ask you a question. How did Alex, how did you get into this? Because we see each other all the time during the uh during the uh, amateur shows, and we kind of always you and I always have small talk. I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm sorry, I'm in your way. I'm trying to get out of the way <laughs> for you guys. And I, I'm very mindful because I know you guys are the first ones in and the last ones out. Uh, you know, and I try to be as uh I try to be as uh out of the way for you guys to do your job. How did you yeah. get into this business? How did that work out? Uh there's a funny story. What happened is what happened is when my son started boxing, you know, he was, we started at, he started boxing at seven, but his first amateur fight, of course, in the United States, you have to be eight years old. Mm. So when he fought, he was eight years old, 60 pounds. And in amateur boxing, the lightest weights go first. So we would be in a gym. We were in Joe Greer boxing gym in Patterson, and we must have had like 15 kids you know, that would fight. You know, there was a lot of kids, but the kids that fought, there were like 15 of them. And so we would go to a fight on a Saturday and uh, my son would be one or two number, you know, the bout number one or number two because he was so light. And right after the bout, my wife would tell me, all right, let's go. And I would be like, no, we can't leave. We got 15 more bouts. We got like 10 kids fighting. <laughs> She's like, 
I'm not going to sit here for 15 bouts on a Saturday. No way. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, man, we're going to have to leave. And I was like, how can I stay here for all the bouts? And then they told me, yo, wow, they need a ring guy. And I was like, yeah, if I put the ring up, not only do I get paid, <laughs> but I get to see all the fights. <laughs> so, yeah. so I oh, put the God. ring up, Julian fought. My wife's like, all right, let's go. I'm like, let's go. I can't go nowhere. That's my ring. She's like, so you're going to stay here? I go, I got to stay here regardless, you know? And so, that's how I got to, and that's how I got to, you know, the business got bigger and bigger. The business got oh bigger and bigger. And I got to see phenomenal fights. And I love what I do. So I'm, I'm never working. Oh, my God. And then, let, let me, so, so like all good men, you had to scam your wife a little bit, the lady of your life, because because you know she she got in the way, she got in the way of what we love, which is boxing. Yeah, You're all on, women get in the way of boxing. I'm not really gonna say too much because she could go ahead and see this video. And we're in quarantine right now, mm -hmm. but right. you're pretty much right, Dave. That's why mm -hmm. you were, you know, lieutenant when you retired. <laughs> this, is how, this is how I started the NYPD boxing team, all right? Because because I, I wanted to stay in box. I wanted to stay in box, and but I had worked a long day, you know? So how am I going to stay in box and have that watch? Because because I run the team, my man, because I run the shows. <laughs> this is my excuse, all right? Honey, yeah. I love you, but, but people, they need me. <laughs> they need me. They need me. Okay. That's exactly what I say. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They yeah, need me. They need me. All right, I'll tell you the same a, thing. A couple quick shout outs here, NY, uh, NYC cops and kids. Thank you for tuning in as always. Leonard uh, Salgado, I already mentioned them, and Jay uh, Cal Lung Kenjin. All right. Uh, what one of the questions is that is it says, and I'm sorry for chopping up your name, Alex. Have you boxed amateur or pro? That's what New York City cops and kids wants to know. And of course, I boxed. I just wasn't too good, but I, I boxed. <laughs> right. They also asked, uh, "What about male modeling? Did you do?" That? <laughs> we got Joe. Yeah, uh, we got I do that. Yeah. That's, right. how, that's how the Pat Russo or Gary Starks. That's that's yeah. their type of sense of humor. <laughs> right, so you, know, you, know, you, know, you know where it's coming from, right? So Leonard Salgado wants to know if uh, you're going to train him again. And then he put ha, ha, ha. Leonardo. Yeah, oh, that's that's my boy. He works for the NBA. Get me some tickets, Leonard. Stop playing around. <laughs> he says you're a funny dude. Yeah. All right, so, uh, okay, here he is. Cowabunga. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. I'm sorry, man, for chopping that up. I don't get glasses on. I do apologize. All right, so, um, so you, so you did, you started just to kind of scam your way into staying for the fights, which I, you know what, I gotta say, I, g I give my props to you. I think that's really, really awesome that you did <laughs> did that because well, that's he was something. Coaching, he, well, to to his to his credit, he was coaching all the kids. He wanted to stay right, for right, them, right, right, right. and 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 he he was working. He did it for the kids. He did for the children, George. For the for children, the kids. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't yeah, get it. Not, a lot of people don't know, but, um, um, you know, my mentor, you know, I really look up to like, um, Pat Russo and Dave. And so you, once you, when you get bit by the boxing bug and you teach these kids how to fight and they learn how to fight and the confidence they have going to school, living life, it's, it's life changing, man. So it's, it's a I good thing. I appreciate yeah. that. I got a quick story about a ring. I got a quick story about a ring. <laughs> we would it, this this wasn't with Alex. This was before I got Alex. And thank goodness I got Alex. We we couldn't get Frank. We couldn't get somebody else. And I, I think this was even before you started. We got somebody from Pennsylvania. And I was terrified that they were gonna show up. They showed up and I, I see him, you know, they they put these um what are they, two by sixes or two by eights or something that, yeah. that, that they put on? So now these boards look like two by ones. I swear. I was like, those boards look skinny, you know? And I got two heavy guys. I got two guys that are like 250, close to 300 pounds boxing. And they go, nah, it's going to be all right. Sure enough, we put these two fat bastards and I, and I, <laughs> I, I disparage them a bit. But the ring, 
The ring was calling them fat bastards. The <laughs> ring. Because they went, quick, 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 you fat bastard. And it and it cracked. So now so now, so now we were like, what are we gonna do? The, the guy goes, this is a guy from like Pennsylvania, right? He goes, Don't worry, I'll put the kid under there, you know, because he's just <laughs> to work with them. The the kid went under the ring. I swear to God, he goes, just keep him off, all right? Because they'll kill him. We we told the guys keep boxing, just stay to one corner. And we told the ref, keep him in that corner. We kept it going. The kid went under there, pushed, pushed up with his back, and this guy put another two by four and just started cranking uh screws in there. I've never seen like something like that in my life. It worked, it worked the rest of the night. And I never called that guy again. I never called him again. <laughs> somebody down the line, I got Alex. And it eats it eased my um my uh sense. Oh, yeah, your go-to guy. Yeah. Clear, clearly he's a lot of go-to guys because he does stuff for PBC, the zone. Who else? Uh you mentioned top rank, top rank you know, so definitely he's Russell Peltz, Marshall yeah. Kaufman. Now, I gotta these, say these guys because if not, they get mad. Yeah, no, I get you. I got you. Yeah, we gotta give him a shout out. Shout out to all the guys, the gentlemen there. That all the kickboxing. What about what about wrestling? Do you do, do you do any wrestling like the WWE type stuff? Brother, wrestling you gotta stay away from. They'll mess up your rings, right? Bro, wrestling. These guys they wanna they wanna climb to the ceilings of the venues and jump down. And I'm like, nah, hell no, my ring ain't gonna go through that. No way. I gotta take care of my rings, bro. They take care of me. You know All right. I mean? no, there's no like no no breakaway tables underneath and chairs that we can throw in the ring when something's going wrong and we could just go in there. We just, you don't have none of that. <laughs> I do have underneath my ring, people don't know, but I have a catastrophe bag. Ah. Because yeah, things have gone wrong. On ESPN, a rope broke on me. Uh, uh, mm. you know what I mean? Um uh in the Prudential Center on a Tomas Adamac card, uh, one of the clamps for the ropes broke on me while they were walking in. It was Michael Grant versus Adamac, and Michael Grant's like six seven, and that rope broke my heart. I thought I was having a nightmare because I have nightmares like that. Mm. So I, I thought it was a nightmare, <laughs> and my boy Butch was like, "Yo, out!" I was like, "Oh no, it's not a dream." <laughs> so I had to jump in there and fix it. The Prudential Center. Sold out all all Polish oh, people. Right. Yeah, that was, and, I got it yeah. fixed though. I think I mean, I mean, at the time you lose about twenty pounds from sweating, but once you get it done, you rock and roll, man, and you can go. It happened to me in, in uh, Pennsylvania also with uh, David Benavides versus Dennis Douglas. Uh, the rock, the rope popped on me there. It happens, you know what I mean. Sometimes when stuff is made in China, it breaks. You know, we go through the same thing when we do our broadcast. Sometimes we have stuff, and we got two of everything just in case because we go through the same thing. And I'm the guy usually sweating. David's just there making jokes and laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> by, yeah. by the way, George, them sharing the, e the ear pods like that, what does that remind you of? That was you and me when we first started uh, broadcasting. We actually we started our first show was with a an iPhone, and I'm like this, and we look like a two headed dummy, and we were sharing or not, uh, we were sharing the uh, actual headphone, and we were able to get people to watch, and we were commenting. I mean, it was a nightmare, it was crazy, but that's how Smoke and Talk Boxing actually started, you know, as, as far as like the broadcast part of it, it was. You know? Well, well, I don't think it was a nightmare. It was groundbreaking at the time. It was groundbreaking. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> nobody, else was, nobody else was doing live stream. Like we, we just started doing it, and it and it became. Um, it caught on. It it caught on. Don't. So all right. So let's get let's get into a couple of questions and uh because it's really not about us, it's about Alex and his son that we're gonna bring on in a little few in a few minutes. Uh we want to ask you, has the epidemic because uh, Leonard asked, and this was a great question because I wanted to ask this, has the epidemic uh, you know affected training at all for you? Uh or is it business as usual? Well, you know, it's gonna it's hitting us. The the only reason you know, we hit uh, Julian has a private boxing gym, so we 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 can go to the gym whenever we want. The only thing is that not all fighters not all fighters are privileged to have their own boxing gym. So you know we just got a fight date, and uh, you know we got to get our sparring together. 
sparring partners together and all that. So not everyone's getting to train. So it, uh, it, there isn't as many fighters to pick from to call because they're not getting to work out in the gyms because, you know, everything's shut down. Right. But uh, that, something like that, you know, small things. But, I mean, I've always been a positive person, so I just yeah, look what, at the positive. What are you doing for money? What are you doing for money? Thank God, before this happened, I had... I hit two home runs with uh, the zone. I did the Mikey Garcia fight in Texas, uh -huh. and uh, you know, so you you sock you sock some money away for times like this for rainy days, and now it's raining, it's pouring. So you you <laughs> you're all set. I'm not set. No, but I'm I mean, never set. But just for the time being, you're you're surviving. Surviving. That's the word we're looking for. Surviving. All right. Now, no. the other thing is you travel You travel with your rings cross country when you have to go to Texas like that, or or do you have like another ring out there, like other, like another, you know? No, I, I you know what, if I'm, uh, I only deal with the, you know, when it, when it comes to like traveling far, I only deal with like the big, the big guys and uh, the big guys like to deal with me because sometimes when they're traveling, like when they're going to states that they don't really know people, you know, just like anybody else, they get nervous because, you know, this is show that millions, millions of dollars are invested. Right. And, and the, you know, right. they could forget a camera, but you can't forget the ring. Right. You know right. what I mean? And so they, they, they just feel confident. They're like, they'll rather call me being 20 hours away and be like, yo, Al, can you come here? We'll, we'll bring you in a week early. We'll, you know, we'll pay for your hotel. We'll pay for your food. You know, but they, but they're, they're secure. You know, they're confident. You know, we got out here. You know, but when they go, like, let's say they go to a, a part of Texas, and and they're like, oh yeah, call Raul, and they're like, yeah, but we never worked with Raul, and you know, they just feel nervous, so they just rather bring me out there if I can make it out there. You know, if it's like the other side of the country, I'm not gonna do that unless the money's right. Who knows? There you go. All right, so that yeah. answers that question. Uh, okay, and then the other thing is uh, Cops and Kids, New York City Cops and Kids wants to know who's your favorite trainer, amateur or pro? <laughs> Yo, this guy's trying to get me in trouble. I swear hey, to God. Oh, you don't have to answer. You don't have to answer. You just say, oh, I like them all. You can give one of those canned uh, political you know, answers. <laughs> you know, as far as, look, man, what a lot of people don't understand, and in order to be a good trainer, you always want to have to learn. No matter who it is, right? No matter who it is, you always gotta want to learn. You know what I mean? And so, there, there really isn't a a, a favorite trainer. You know what I mean? Yeah. But a... I love um, uh, you know, George Benton from uh, Pennsylvania. You know, he's passed already, but I listen to a lot. He has to say, you know, Gary Starks. I'm always learning from uh, my team. Uh, I got a. Uh, Angel De Jesus, I got Edgar Sanchez. They both had five world champs. I love Gary Starks, Chino Rivas, you know, Marco Suarez. That's a good friend of mine. He's a great trainer. You know, New York has a lot of great trainers. New Jersey has great trainers. I used to learn a lot from Lou Duva, you know, so I just keep my ear open. And when people speak, I try to learn as much as possible. Tommy Brooks, Lou, um, FIFO, Frankie Toledo, Joe Greer, you know. So ba basically, so many. If, if you don't know him personally, you're not going to say him right now. No, well, I never, you know, I don't know George Benton. I never met him. In that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But so, oh, so you want me to give you people that are alive right now? No, no, I'll no. I'll tell you right yeah, now. I know about it. I'll, I'll, I'll just make it learn, I, I know what you're doing. You're, if, you're you a learn, if you want to learn what not to do, you listen to Pat Russo. <laughs> touché, touché. Yeah. 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 That's what you get for asking a question like that, Patty. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to put you on a line. I saw yeah. that. I, I saw know. that. I know. All right. So we got a picture of you here with a ring that you set up. You also did this is this is like an iconic photograph because you're here and you see in the backdrop. You got the Statue of Liberty. I mean, I'm sorry, the Empire State Building, uh, right there. I, this this is like iconic. You're doing this outside. That's pretty cool, man. Where is that exactly? That's outside Madison Square Garden. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I believe that's a top rank. So I think I believe that's when um uh, oh that you know what that was when Lamanchenko fought um what's the uh the guy that he trains in Japan but he's Hispanic Linares. That's when oh, yeah. Lamanchenko yeah. fought yeah. Linares. Great right. fight, bro. Yeah. That was a great fight. So that was like what that was like the sparring session outside or training session. Yeah, that's the open workout. Yeah, oh, the right. open workout. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, okay. that's the open yeah. workout. Yeah. Great fight. That was a fantastic right. fight. So let's let's get to let's get to your son. Let's get to Julian. Right yeah, well, yeah, well, you got well, a little footage? Gonna, gonna, footage? Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Let me give you a story with Julian about the rings. Oh yeah, all right, talk to us. I'm gonna give you a fantastic story about Juliet with the rings. We're doing the ring in the Prudential Center, right? And so we're sitting, he we're in the front row, and he's like, Dad, when do we break the ring now? I go, Juliet, three more rounds. This is the last fight, right? This is the last fight. Three more rounds, we break it down. All right. Dad, this is the last round. I go, this is the last round, brother. After this round, we're gonna go fight. I mean, we're gonna go break this ring down. All right. Boom, the, he, the, the bell rings. He goes, the fights are over. I go, fights are over, bro. It's time to work. He goes, I got to go to the bathroom. I was up I'm on like, it. There you go. I go, I go, you got to go to the bathroom. He goes, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom. I said, all right, cool. Don't worry about it. Go to the bathroom. Come back. We'll finish this ring up. Two hours later, he comes back. I go, Julian, <laughs> the ring is broken down already, bro. What, what happened? You're not gonna believe me. I got lost inside the Prudential Center. I go, <laughs> you got lost in the Prudential Center for two hours? He goes, yeah, but look, I brought you a Gatorade. I was like, wow, this guy is unbelievable. I'm never bringing you to do a ring again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you what, that kid Julian is smart. That's smart. He's smart. Yeah, He's a smart guy. He took right after his father. Because let me tell you something. Uh, remember, you wanted to stay for the fights. You you got the ring. You put it in. There you go. Yeah, he got got yeah, yeah. Dad, I'll help you. I'll help you break yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Take me to the fights. Yeah, we got him to the ringside. Yeah, he's a Gatorade. <laughs> he's a Gatorade. <laughs> don't be mad. He said, "Don't be mad." I got you a Gatorade. I was like, "Wow." Oh my God! I love this guy. I love this guy. <laughs> yeah, but this is my boy, right? Speaking of I, the man, I, I had to make sure I told Top Rank to to include. That in the contract, I couldn't do anything dangerous, you know, any other <laughs> jobs. I could get hurt on the job, you know. So I and told him that's it for the rings. That's it. It's over. <laughs> let's, let's, let's introduce wow. you. So wow. Julian uh, Rodriguez, light welterweight. Uh, what's your record? 19, like 19 and 0, right? Yeah, I'm currently 19 and 0. AKA Hammer Hands. Hammer Hands. That's what you see there in your screen, Hammer Hands. Yeah, Hammer Hands. All right, so tell us a little bit about how long did you start boxing? Because, you know, your dad's been around in the boxing game for a long time, and obviously he brought you into the boxing game. How long have you been actually, you know, physically getting in there and, and mixing it up? Since what age? Well, I started I started when I was seven. Um, started competing when I was eight. And by the time I was nine, I was already ranked number one in the country for my, my age and stuff like that. Wow. So we moved pretty quick, man. You know, um, once you saw the, uh, I guess, natural – ability that I did have at that time, whether it was heavy hands or just, you know, just the, um, just the, the, the motivation in me to just go and train. He just, he stopped his focusing on his career and just, you know, started training me and we both sort of grew in the process. All right. So let, let me, let me just put on a short video of one of your previous fights. I want the audience to see this. It's just a minute video. We're going to put that on. And Julian Rodriguez back in the ring with those white gloves. First time in almost two years. And let's see as Bovac says, can he get back on the bike easily? Or will he have a little bit of trepidation? Good left hand quickly. Well, he seems he's still got his feet. <laughs> And it's almost been, when you look at his record, three years, because I think in 2017, he only fought one time. You know, so that's a long time. And fortunately, he's so young, at only 24 years old, he got a, a, an early start. It's not really going to cost him too much in terms of his age. But it, that, that's valuable time and experience when you're in a, in a stable with a lot of talented fighters, Bruce. I wouldn't go too far. He's got hammer hands. And Herrera... <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Sparkly giving him the mandatory count. Oh, no, 
Tyson. And I don't think he's getting up. Herrera knocked out by Rodriguez in his return in the first round. That was a devastating knockout. Devastating. How, how did that feel, man? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's on a big stage with Top Rank and ESPN. How did that feel to have that be shown like that in the uh, for the general public to see? Um, well, that was that specific fight was after a long layoff of an ongoing injury I had at the time in my shoulder. So it was a lot more riding on my shoulders, you know, just being back in the ring. Um, it was the first time in a few years that I've seen a lot of my family and supporters in those seats while I was in that ring, um, and just make, see my children there ringside. It was it was a it was a special moment for me, and I knew I was uh, very well prepared for that for that night. Wow, that's cool. How how long of an uh, injury do you have? What do you have? A uh, rotator cuff uh, problems? I had a, I had a torn labrum, and right. it, you know it wasn't you know. It wasn't as bad as we thought initially, but we kept coming back too soon during the recovery process, which sort of prolonged the recovery process. So, you know, that's why it was originally supposed to be around eight to 10 months recovery, but then that, you know, lasted two, two and a half years. So, yeah, that's, that's very common with people with rotator cuff injuries, yeah. especially if they're athletes, they just don't rest enough to let it heal and then they re injure it and they make it worse. And I guess you went through that roller coaster of, of, yeah. of that. So now, all right. So let so you were you were the national champ at nine years old, right? Give us give us some more of because you're from New Jersey. So I know I know most of the New York guys. Give us a little bit more of your amateur pedigree and how top rank uh, approached you to uh, to sign you. Well, I've always had a pro style. Um, because of, I guess, as a child, I always had heavier hands than the average kid my age and weight. Um, that's where I got the name Hammer Hands from. I had that name since I'm 10 years old. But um, I always had a pro style, heavy punches to the body, you know, hard hooks to the head while I'm swinging under. A big part of my inspiration for that was Joe Frazier. And, um, you know, at, coming up, we used to watch a lot of old fights and study a lot of old fights. Joe Frazier, Salvador Sanchez. Um, Roberto Duran, you know, and all those Morales, um, and it was just, it got to a point where I had to stop sparring little kids. So I, at 12 years old, I was already sparring smaller pros, pros that weighed 108, you know, things like that. Um, and from then on, I, I just, whenever I went into the ring, it was with a, with a pro mentality. So I think that caught the eye of a lot of big pro promotional companies quite early, um, and then it, it became a point where, you know, I, I was number one in the country for consecutive years, up, you know, all the way until I was ready to turn pro. Um, but once I started winning in these bigger tournaments and I started to really, um, you know, we, we were going across country, you know, out of the country. Um, I, I, we started to notice that the best fighters weren't winning anymore, you know, and we felt like uh, not just us, but many fighters weren't really getting the fair shake in terms of the decisions or, or whatever. And we worked every, we work every day. You know, I've been in the sport since I'm seven years old. We hit that bag every single day. So we didn't feel like we wanted to wait another four years after the 2012 Olympics came around. So, you know, we didn't want to go and waste another four years all for, you know, the judge to give it to somebody else who we felt didn't deserve the win. Um, but it was early, you know, 16, 17 years old. We were making it public. We were talking about it in, uh, you know, the, the news interviews and, and the paper and all that stuff. So, and we were getting, you know, calls from everybody. So, but we've been approached from a lot of people, at, you know, um, but at the time we, we had a solid game plan and, you know, top rank approached us and, uh, you know, the, the deal was signed three, three months after I won the national golden gloves. Big wow. shot. Ranks. Big shout out to Top Ranks and ESPN for the footage. Uh, hopefully they won't, uh, you know, take us down. <laughs> but uh, big shout out to them. We're gonna put that that footage just in case. Uh, you know, we'll give them a shout out as well. Uh, you uh, you got to make a call, by the way, to to your people in Top Rank. So to not to get a copyright strike. Yeah, yeah. But but I, let me ask you a question. When's your next? When's your next bout? So yesterday we just got the uh, final word that uh, July seventh will be our, our next fight, and that'll be up in uh, Vegas. Vegas, nice. 
Okay, are there any are there any restrictions that uh maybe they're they're loosening? Are you going to be fighting in an empty uh, you know an empty arena? How are they doing that in Vegas? Yeah, as of now, there's no crowds allowed. I don't know exactly when that uh, is going to turn back around, but um you know as a fighter, I'm just uh, I'm just uh, grateful that they're even finding ways for me to keep working. So, um you know it's not it's not healthy for a fighter to sit long out anyway. You know, um so we're just doing everything we can, and uh, I think. Yeah, I think the no crowds is the way to go, and I think that's what they're doing. Wow. Okay. So let me let me ask you. You have you have nineteen nineteen uh, pro uh, fights. We we lost the stream. Uh, okay, we're back. I'm I'm here. I still feel it. We yeah, can... we we lost the stream temporarily. All right. So so you said uh, as All of right. now, there's no there's no uh, you said there's no uh, there's not going to be an audience. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be an audience. Um, I don't know for how long, you know, but that's what the word is now. Now, how's that going to feel going into, you know, Vegas now without an audience? Is Because sometimes a lot of athletes, they, they you know, they, they, they get energy and they, you know, the, the, the audience ha actually helps them uh, get into the fight. I mean, is that going to be something that is going to affect you? Um, well, it definitely won't affect me. But, you know, I can't say, you know, I can't really talk about that experience because I've never experienced something like that before i don't think any anyone has in the boxing world but um you know when, when i'm in that backstage dressing room you know there's no my my mind is focused on one thing so um i don't really see how something like that will uh when i'm in the ring anyway i don't see or hear the crowd all i hear is my corner and that's i'm just complete tunnel vision in the ring and i don't think uh you know the lack of crowd or the lack of noise is gonna take my game off or take my focus off the fight. All right. Awesome. All right. So that's not going to affect you in any way in that sense. All right. Um, uh, what else? I had another question. I just lost my, Oh yeah. It's going to be on. They're going to, is that going to be a pay-per-view or is that going to be on TV? Cause one of the other, uh, somebody on the group chat, it's going to be uh, streamed on the regular ESPN plus, you know, regular streaming, whatever they, uh, All right. so they if, if you want to watch, uh, you know, you want to watch Julian Rodriguez, you got to go to ESPN. Here's a little plug uh, with top rank uh, ESPN. That's your man. We're going to promote him. That's what we're here. We're here to promote that man right there, Julian Rodriguez. So you, if you're watching, download the app on ESPN, ESPN Plus. Uh, you can get that. And I think it's on sale right now with the Disney package and a whole bunch of stuff. But, you know, that's not for me to sell. But guess what? Julian Rodriguez is going to be on it. So you, you got to make sure you watch and download it so you can watch him. We're promoting his fight. All right. So, Dave. All right. So, so, so Julian, so take, take us through it a little bit because I, I know about it, but I'd like some of our fans to know you turn pro, you have a, an exquisite amateur pedigree and then especially somebody like yourself, you have, you have a pro style, right? So now you come, you, you got to get to 19 wins and you're going to have, you're going to have to fight journeymen and you're going to have to fight certain styles because if you don't do it, you know, tell us about the fight you had. Do you have – I don't see that you had too many hard fights. I see that you went to distance a few times. But tell us about the type of opponents uh, that you've gotten and how, how you handle each one of them. Uh, well, early on in my career, I've had a lot of fighters that would come forward. And, you know, the hand speed and just the intelligence alone would – you know, they pretty much wouldn't make it out the first or second round. Um, then as time progresses, you know – you, you start to, to, you know, come face to face with people that will take your best shot and keep it, keep it pushing. So, you know, then that's when the intelligence kicks in or, or just the, um, the ability to adapt to anything. And I, you know, I'm appreciative and grateful for my amateur career, which has molded me to be able to do that and think that way and think quick enough in the ring. Um, there hasn't been a style in there that I haven't seen yet. So I'm pretty much um, well-rounded and well experienced in terms of dealing with a certain style and I see. Um, but again, there was a time where, again, my, my uh, shoulder was, a, was an issue for me. Um, and I was fighting with it for two years or about a year and a half with it torn and I, hadn't, I didn't really know. I thought it was just a regular ongoing boxing injury. Um, so when I noticed that my power wasn't the same, that's when, you know, my corner and I sort, sort of just decided to um, focus more on other aspects of my game, whereas the jab or the footwork and things like that. So once I came up, overcame those injuries and 
you know, I, I kind of bounced back and was back in the ring. I was a more complete, more rounded fighter than I was before. So I'm actually, okay, yeah, I look in the positive of everything that kind of comes that's, to me. That's something that I don't want to say because you and I had a little conversation beforehand and I was like, I, I, I you know, I, I, I went out to YouTube, I saw a couple of your fights and I said, my man, where, where's that jab? Where's that jab? I was like, you're beating people up, but you know, where, where's the jab? And you said, oh, that was my earlier fights. So was it that you weren't able to jab because of your arm injury or is it that you had to recreate? Like, because you hit hard. So people who hit as hard as you, sometimes that's their biggest problem is that they want to knock everybody out yeah. and they forget to jab. And then you obviously have no problem coming in to make it an in-fight. So, so talk talk about that. About, about yeah. the well, if you notice in any, any of my fights, I never come out with the intentions to knock people out in the first round. That's not my style. Even if I'm not throwing, uh, you know, two or three jabs at a time from the first round, you know, I'm still using my footwork. I'm still looking at the openings. I'm still trying to figure him out. Um, a lot of the times, you know, especially in the first 10 pro fights I've had, I wouldn't even be trying to knock people out, but I throw the right shot at the right time. And you know what I mean? They, they won't be able to, to handle that. They didn't handle that, you know, but um, those were never my intentions, you know, but uh Again, the injury sort of, sort of forced me to to study other areas. You know, we were we had a we had a great job. We always did, but you know, we had a certain game plan that was working for us. And at the time, the fighters that I was facing, that's how you're supposed to fight them. You know, when when you're in the ring with somebody and you know, especially after the first few seconds that they're not supposed to be in that ring with you, you got to do what you got. You know, you got to take care of that. You know. Um, or else people, you know how, how it goes, oh, he's not, you know, the rumors start to fly or whatever, like, you know, he's not who we thought he was or whatever, but I don't really pay attention to those things. I just go in there, I do what I do. If I have to walk him down and be more aggressive, and, and that's what it is. If I have to box for a few rounds and, and get him tired or mentally wear him out, then that's another strategy. You know, there's no, the, the list is endless here with the strategies. All right. So what do you tell a young boxer that wants to get into this sport and how to protect themselves when they're involved? You know, how, how do you, you know, like if let's say your son wants to get involved in the sport, how would you bring him up and what kind of advice would you give somebody like that? Like, a, you know, a young person, you know, it all comes down to the guidance, you know, there's been, I grew up around so many talented fighters, um, you know, and, and this is a tough sport. So, you know, not everyone, you know, reaps the rewards right away. You know, or a lot of people feel like they don't, you know, for all the hard work they put in, the awards and the reward is not reciprocated. But when you stick it out and you keep going through that hard work, you know, things will always, you know, pan out. Um, it, all, it all happens to do with the work ethic, you know, um, and just staying on the right track, not being, you know, uh, just, just staying on the right road. And, and that's sort of what I, what I would, you know, encourage the kids to do if they're interested in this. All right. Great advice. Great advice. Um, all right. So who, who do you emulate? You mentioned some of the, um, you know, the boxers that you looked up to. Uh, I think you said, uh, was it Joe? Was Who was it, Joe? Yeah, uh, well, we used to study those fighters, Joe Frazier, Salvador Joe Frazier, Sanchez. Right. Salvador, you know, those, those were great, great fighters. Um, and those on the, you know, years ago. Who do you who do you like right now in boxing? Who's one of the guys that you say, hey, man, that guy's awesome. Uh, his style, whatever, or something that you might emulate or, or you just admire? Um, well, I, I pick things up from, from a lot of fighters. Um, I, I really like Manny Pacquiao's footwork. Um, uh, he was a, I was a former sparring partner for him, and I learned a lot being in the ring in terms of his footwork. And, and I really understood how the footwork really separates good fighters from great fighters. So mm -hmm. in terms of the footwork, you know, I'll give that to Manny. Um, believe it or not, you know, a lot of people see Floyd as a, you know, the average fan or the casual fan will consider him boring or he, he runs around or whatever the case may be, but he's actually a very intelligent, technical inside fighter where he uses a lot of defensive tactics and he takes, he takes things away from you. He'll take your best attribute from you. And in terms of intelligence, I study Floyd a lot also, um, you know, in terms of style, I think there's many parallels between me and Canelo. Um, some of my favorites now are Gary Russell Jr. Um, I like Canelo. 
a lot. I like Terrence Crawford. Uh, Shakur Stevenson, of course, is from New Jersey. Um, those are, you know, those are the ones so far. You know what I mean? There's a lot. There's a lot of fighters. You know what I mean? Like right. teammates. Andre, of course, Andre Ward. You know, right. Bermudez, Christian Bermudez, my teammate. Hmm. Um, you know, All right. you, you've been you've been in Manny Pacquiao's training camp. Can you can you name some other names? And then also, yeah, first name some other names that you've been in uh, in training with, sparring with. Um, that, that helps a lot. Manny Pacquiao. Uh, Yo, Danny Sugas. Danny so, Garcia. Yeah, Danny Garcia is a close friend of ours. Um, who else? Was Pro- Rusan Provanikov, we sparred a few oh, times. These, these, are know, big, big names. these are big names wow. you're mentioning. Wow. And, this, is and, the top, this is the cream of the crop. These are the yeah. top guys, top dogs that you're, you're, you're sparring with. Yeah. Um, when I was 12 years old, I was sparring world champion Carlos Stamara. He's from Colombia. My assistant coach has had him. You know, they were training him at the time, but uh, he was a champion at 108. Yeah, yeah 108 world champion. Wow, that's crazy. And I was sparring world champions at 12 years old, so that's sort of where the pro style would come from. <laughs> he I kicked was, our ass. Yeah, I used to get beat up real <laughs> bad, and then, you know, after a few months, it started to turn around a little bit. But, you know, um, yeah, I'm very grateful for all these people that, that I've been. Great experiences, uh, I'm sure. All yeah, right, Dave, you wanted to bring work something up, Dave? Yeah, I, I, I wanted to... Uh, Let's see. Let's see if I got this. I got. I, I think I got some footage right here. Let Let's uh, you have to share your screen, Dave. Share your screen. Share your oh, screen. Oh, oh, hold up one second. I gotta hit this. I, yes, indeed. Let me hit the shared screen. Sorry. All right. Tell me when we're ready, George. All right. We're gonna we're gonna put it onto the screen onto the screen. Here we go. Okay. Hold up one second. I just got. Hit that. <laughs> All right. I, I found this 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 superstar right here. You in the red or the blue, Julian? I'm in the blue. Ladies and gentlemen, the results. And he looks. Look at his head movement. He looks like a pro. I was 16 there. Look at this guy go. And and this is for the for the for the country, right? Yeah. It's the PAOs. That's the PAOs. Yep. Oh, oh no, that's the JOs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Junior that's Olympics. a Junior Olympics. In, uh, yeah. Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, we give them right, an eight count. Yeah, we start beating them up. This, this is some serious stuff. So, right here, this is this is not an amateur style. Now, look at you come forward. You are just a hard hitting machine, strong combination. Good for work and letting your hands go. Yeah. I noticed, you know, I noticed that, you know, after after the first few seconds, I noticed that he didn't have the dog in him. So, yeah, I'm, a lot of my – I might be a, pretty sloppy or whatever or I might not use certain things, but I knew that once I started to press press it, he, the, the guy was crying, actually. So he was crying. He had a bloody nose. So I knew once I was pressing the action that I was going to get him out of eventually. Look at those hooks. Oh, my God. Yeah, when you're 16, 17 years old and you're making people cry, you know what I mean? So that 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 lets you that lets you know exactly where you are in the ring, you know, in terms of the fight, you know. Okay. Wow. And and I gotta ask this. I gotta ask this as as a coach, as a fellow coach, like your father is. What what did, you said Manny Pacquiao, you liked his his foot his footwork. What specifically do you like about his footwork? Uh the fact that he can throw six punches, you blink. And by the time your eyes open back up, he's behind you. So, <laughs> yeah, you you don't know where he is. So then, when you go to find him, he hits you with six more punches. So that's sort of uh, that's exactly when I when he did that to me, I was like, okay. And guess what? The next sparring, I did it right back to him. So that that's exactly uh, you know that's how this boxing game works, man. It's really all about experience. You know, you could be sitting there in your local town for twenty years, you know, and then you could get a guy who who in two years traveled the world and, and experienced a lot more, and that, that fighter will be a lot more, you know, groomed than the other one. Awesome. That is crazy. Iron sharpens iron, as they say. That's right. Yeah. It's funny because uh, last on Tuesday, uh, or it was a Tuesday before, we, we covered Manny Pacquiao on the one, two, threes. And what I was noticing is that it's almost like he takes a running start and he punches with each step, but his feet are moving incredibly fast. 
and his hands are moving at the same speed. He's throwing a one, two, three, like from halfway across the ring, and he and he's gonna hit you with it. And if you stay up and you stay in his path, he's gonna run you over with it. So that was one of the things that I was pointing out with Manny. Everybody has their own little little thing. Yeah, he's weird. Manny Pacquiao also. Um, he's a lefty. So if you go on his right side, if you go on his right side, Manny Pacquiao has a weird way of hitting you with his left hand, even if you're like, yeah. like I don't, I don't understand it, but it's it's like some sort of twist or something that he does, you know? Yeah, he'll move down to that side before he throws the punch and then sort of pops you with the punch. Um, see, the thing about that is that leaves him open to the left hook, and that's all southpaws. You know, pretty much with all southpaws, every punch they throw, they always drop the opposite hand. So when they want to throw that straight left, you buckle down that right hand and you shoot a hard hook and they're going to eat it nine times out of ten. When they throw their jab or when they throw a right hook, your hook goes right over it. You know, and my, my best punch is a left hook. So I, I actually really enjoy fighting southpaws. Wow. That yeah. is, that, that's, some great, that's some great knowledge. I love fighting southpaws. Somebody who's been in the eye of the storm. All right, now uh, one more question. You got anything, George? You got anything that you want? No, to I got I got one last thing before we uh before we go. We're coming up on an hour, but uh, go ahead first, and then I'm gonna. Yeah, finish. I just like all right. So amateurs versus the pros, right? I would I would say the juniors versus the seniors, but if you're at 12 years old, spawn with world champions, that that doesn't exist for you. <laughs> amateurs versus the pros. Once you get those smaller gloves, tell us about it. How is it getting hit by that? How is it hitting? hitting other people with it yeah do you notice a difference are you workman like do you what what how do you handle that so the first thing that i noticed was that everything seemed so much more clear so maybe it was no headgear or the small with gloves or whatever it was but it just felt like every punch that was being thrown at me was in slow motion compared to what i was used to it was every punch was thrown in slow motion you know, my, my glove could fit in the tightest blocks, you know, so things like that really was like, wow, okay, I see every opening. Um, another part, the, the no shirt aspect really makes me feel a little bit more elusive. I know it's, it's you know, might not be, um, you know, real, right. you know, real part of the, the, the strategy, but, you know, it, that's how I feel. Um, I just feel more open. I feel more, more in control when in the pros. That's good. That's good. That's all I got, George. All right. I got one last thing. All right. So you saw us early in the show pitching something. We were pitching these socks. I want to ask you a question, Alex. I'm going to, sure. this is going to be, this is going to be like, I mean, this is like, uh, you know, very ballsy. I mean, but would you wear these on July 8th <laughs> out in Vegas when you're fighting? If we sent you a pair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey man, send, send them over. Send them these, over. these are collector's items, man. That's all okay. I'm gonna ask. <laughs> so, all right, man. Yeah. I gotta send your dad one too because me and your dad have been working. Alex, how long have we been working together? How, how long have you been doing my shows? <clears throat> About twelve years already. Wow, it doesn't. Remember when I when I brought you into the beach? Remember I did it on the sand and, and it used to drive you crazy? <laughs> I used to have to carry the metal through the sand, and my ring would have sand for the next two weeks. <laughs> he charged me extra. He charged me extra for that. I had to. My canvas stunk like beer. <laughs> oh, the best shows ever. The best. The best the show. Without a doubt, the best shows ever, man. These guys could, some of them couldn't fire a lick, and it was the best fights I've ever seen. Oh, my God. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we got a couple more questions coming in, but let me ask you right right before we leave, uh, Alex, you 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 were a writer and you sang or you made music or somebody in the chat was saying that. Is that something? No, my son. Oh, yeah. My son. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm it, 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 it. Alex. Uh, yeah, I, I've actually been doing music since I've been 12, and it actually sort of started because of boxing because, you know, growing up, um, I wasn't able to leave the house. So it was training and right back to the house. So I, I had a you know, fit, you know, I had to keep myself entertained in the house. So, you know, I had to become good at things you do by yourself. So for a while it was drawing. And then for a while it was, I got occupied with video games. And then eventually just, I started picking up instruments and then I just started recording. And then it just led to uh, me using it, me doing music for multiple reasons, but it's just, um, 
I find that it, it plays a big factor in my camp, in my training, believe it or not, because yeah, you go to the cool. gym, you know, you express yourself in, in one way, physical, you know, you're hitting stuff and that's releasing some type of energy. But then when you go home and you're all tired and worn out physically, I find it therapeutic to use the other part of my brain and, and allow another part of me to express myself in different ways. So that um, it, it's, it's cool for, it, it's definitely um, great for when I'm cutting weight because it keeps my mind off of the fact that I'm hungry or thirsty. So, and when you're in front of that computer, the hours fly by, by fly by. So that's uh, another good you know thing. It keeps me home, you know, on Friday and Saturdays, I'll be, home making beats or singing or, or writing for another artist or, you know, doing stuff like that. So. Oh, oh man, I got to ask this. I, I, I'm i sorry. I just got to ask this one question. I said I was going to ask it. All right. What you're walking around with, what is your week before weight and how do you get down to make weight? I'm 140 all the time. I saw you. I try to stay, I, you know, I stay within the 15 pound range, you know, that's pretty much it. I've been this weight since I'm 16, 17 years old. So it is getting a little tougher to get down, but with the, um, the dedication and the preparation, you know what I mean? When you, when you, uh, live a, um, scheduled and, and, and disciplined day by day life, especially during camp, you know, the way the, your body will, will do whatever you want it to do. All right. So you got called out, Dave. You got called out. Uh, no, 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 no. I think you have to charge him extra I think, for that now. A, I think somebody had a problem last fight. I think I think somebody had a problem making weight. Oh, oh there you go. You had a couple of ounces. Yeah, it was a few ounces, you know, but um <laughs> it is what it is. We, we that won't that won't happen again. Love yeah. it. Love right. it. So, uh, hey, I think all right. <laughs> say, say, Ray Campbell wants to hear some. He wants to hear some. He says maybe he could. Uh, well, he wants you to sing. Some of his rap skills quite quick. Before oh, you know, I would, out. but my phone, I have to hook it up to the charge. It's about to die. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you go on my Instagram, oh, if you go on my Instagram and my social media, at oh. Team oh. Hands, I have oh. a lot of singing oh. clips. Oh, I have man. a lot of stuff up there. What a you know? plug, man. He's plugging his rap. <laughs> where's the courage where's the courage Spit it, uh, no i'm not there yet with music the music is personal so yeah All let right. me know what you want me to sing <laughs> yeah. let me know what you want me to sing sing, sing, sing rudolph, sing rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> all right so julian julian what, what okay so for for social media purposes and anybody that's watching this how can people follow you before we end the show we want to make sure that uh you know they follow you on, on your social media Sure. Uh, everything is at Team Hammerhands, T-E-A-M, Hammerhands. And that's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you know, all that stuff. How social are you really on social uh, media? What, what was that? How social are you really on social media? Because some people have social yeah. media they use it. Are, are you on it often? Can your fans like tune in? And, yeah, and, 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 and I'm very uh, responsive on it. You know, people can get in touch with me very easily. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm on it as much as... You know, if I have a lot of things to promote or if I'm in training or if I'm doing music, I'll just, I'll put it up, you know, for the most part, it's geared towards, you know, I'm, I'm very conscious of my image at times. So I'm not going to put up things that aren't relative to what I'm doing in my life at that moment, you know, or pursuing. Cool. So, cool. Um, yeah, I, I look at my page really as sort of like a business page. I don't really have a, I don't really put everything up personal up there. You know, I don't, I'm a private type of person anyway. So awesome. Awesome. All right, Alex, thank you always, and thank you for being my ring guy. For, we got to uh, get some shows. We got to get some shows going. Well, we, we do. We, we got to get this COVID out of, out, of, out of town. I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know what's going on. All right, so, so we'll be back for sure with some yeah. shows. And Thank you, guys, man. No, really appreciate you, it. Gentlemen. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, gentlemen, for, for hanging out us with us here an hour. Uh, and big shout-outs to Fame Records, Leonard Salgado, Ray Campbell, and everybody else that's tuned in. If I missed you, I'm sorry. I do apologize. Well, I chopped up your name. I do apologize. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. Dave, any last words? Hey, man, just just get out there on Smoker Talk. Help us out a little bit. And yeah. we'll bring you the great guys like this. After Thank you, man. Yeah, I'll definitely repost all this stuff. And, I, again, I really yeah. appreciate the opportunity to talk and – 
announce the fight date and all this stuff. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, but all right, so July 8th. Remember, tune in on to ESPN. July, no, July, July 7th. 7th. July 7th. I'm sorry, July 7th on ESPN. If they tune in July 8th. They're going to have Mr. George. Yeah. <laughs> You'll catch the highlights. <laughs> uh, ESPN. And send, send an extra pair of socks. Seven, like seven. Wear it when, he, when he's building the ring, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seven, seven. Seven. Yeah, and Alex will have socks, too. Alex, shoot me a text. Shoot me your address. I'm gonna, I'm you gonna put it. these socks. I got them for you. Boy. You got it, guys. All right, guys. Thanks. Fly Thank some in to watch Julian Hammer Time Rodriguez Hammer Hands Rodriguez, uh, and you can see that on ESPN. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll see you guys. Well, wait a minute. Uh, okay, your father. They want to know about you, Alex. If you have social media, before we let you go, we want to make sure that you also get your social media on. Uh, I don't got that. You just send it to Julian. I don't. I'm a. My son calls me a boomer. He calls me a boomer. I don't know about the computers oh, and stuff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we'll end on that note. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. We'll have you um, tune in on Tuesday. We have the Coach's Corner right here also. You can tune in onto the Coach's Corner on YouTube and Facebook or on Smoke and Talk Boxing on YouTube and Facebook. Later, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Take care Thank now. You guys. All right. Peace.